Um, so while with blockchain academics, we're going to go into how to generate income with cryptocurrency. These methods I've used, I've used all of these methods and I'm going to be sharing them with you and we're going to kind of go quick through the how to's. I've generated over hundreds of thousands of dollars using these methods and I'm going to show you which, which ones I use the most, um, what I do every day and um, yeah, let's get started. So first of all, if you don't know what Bitcoin is, then you're going to have to just look on Google. It is definitely the greatest asset. Actually, speaking about that, I have a picture I want to show you guys. So Willie Wu, uh, my friend I met at the Financial Summit, a, a lot of great traders, hedge fund owners got together and met up and he's an on-chain uh, analyst. So he looks at everything aside from like the TA graph. He looks at mining and hash rate and uh, wallet usage and all this other stuff to analyze price. So um, he looked at every other asset and Bitcoin actually outperformed. Oh, I don't know how that. That's weird. I thought I got hacked for a second. Bitcoin outperformed um, every other asset, as you can see. U.S. stocks, uh, real estate, bonds, gold, emerging currencies, and oil. This is a four-year, uh, every four years. Cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin specifically, actually, has outperformed every other stock. So in terms of asset allocation, if you don't have 1% of Bitcoin, it's going to really hurt you. If you have $100, you can invest a dollar. If you have $1,000, $10, you, you see what I mean? So 1% to 5% depends on how much exposure you want and how much uh, Bitcoin you want. So specific, like for myself, I'm 50%, I'm even more than 50% because... Um, I've already taken out a ton of money. I've set myself up and everything I have in Bitcoin is profits. So here are the ways you can make money with Bitcoin. Uh, trading, that is one of the most uh, popular ways. Masternodes, moon launch coins, proof of stake, social media, airdrops, and accepting cryptocurrency for products and services. So that's the best way to do it. Just getting crypto literally for, uh, instead of USD, if you're going to sell a product or service online, that's the best way. Um, so trading cryptocurrency. This is the most popular way when people think of trading, just to buy and hold. We're going to go over uh, multiple different uh, currencies that you could have bought, the gains for both years or losses. So BTC, $750, 2017, uh, two, 2017 at $750. A year, and that's 2,500%. $1,000 invested would have made you just slightly over 25 grand. Ethereum was $8. I actually bought Ethereum at like nine, ten dollars Went to like, what was it, 1,500 USD and blew up. So $8, one year gain, 13,000%. $138. I didn't invest $1,000 though. Um, 2017 Litecoin, $4.50. A year's uh, gain is $48.88, and that's $48 grand. Uh, XRP is the largest gain. I actually traded it a few times when it was like this cheap, but I didn't accumulate any. Uh, so XRP at fraction of a cent. Uh, one year later, 38,000%, $380,000. That's crazy, literally. And this is if you invested in Bitcoin. And after the hype and craze, you're like, I need some cryptocurrency. And you invested at the start of January 2019. That's when we started entering into a bear market, when the price reversed and we started coming down. We hit from, I think it was seven fifty to $20,000. Uh, in almost a year, it was, it's crazy. That's like, that's a ton of money for if you had a little bit invested. And um, I'm gonna just after this go into why I think we're gonna see new highs. And if we were at a dollar and I told you Bitcoin is gonna go to 20 grand, you think I'm, you think, you know, you think I'm, you think I'm crazy. And if it was at 20 grand and I told you this thing might go to 50, 100, a million dollars, you might think I'm crazy, but, um, it's proved itself uh, time and time over again, and it's unfathomable where the price can go. Especially, like, look at these facts. There's more people just in the U.S. This was reported today. There's more people just in the U.S. 
um, then there are Bitcoins using cryptocurrency. So 21 plus million users, there's 21 million Bitcoins. That's not taking into account what's not mined yet, what's been lost, what ha has, will never surface again because maybe uh, the person who owned the wallet passed away, uh, it was lost, private keys lost, exchanges hacked and went down. So um, there's not a lot of Bitcoin. And a lot of people think you need to invest uh, about $10,000 to buy one, but it splits up into 100 million pieces. So if you bought at $17,256, you'd be at an 80% loss, $1,000 invested would be $200. January 2018, $1,000 invested in Ethereum, 81% loss, $183. January 2018 for Litecoin, $232. I think this was the biggest loser, 85%, $142 left. Uh, and then XRP, $2.15, 83% loss, 167 remaining out of the thousand. So if you bought and hold, like you see here, in January 2017, you would have been killing it. You would have been pretty wealthy um, and you would have done a great job. But coming in 2018, you would have lost uh, definitely uh, a lot of that um, profit that you wrote up. So depending on when you come into the market, if you're going to buy and hold, it's a great strategy for long term, which can be years. Um, and you don't really want to manage trading. You're just going to invest because you think this asset, this technology, um, it's great. It's going to, you know, I can see it doing really well in the next five, 10 years. That's why you would kind of buy and hold long term. Range trading, that's kind of, that's getting into more of what I do. You're looking for resistance and support, support and resistance. I'm going to go more into depth of this later. A uh, support level is where level uh, tends to find support as it falls. This means that the price is more likely to bounce off the slope rather than break through it and a resistance level is the opposite of a support level it's where the price tends to find resistance as it rises so again this means that the price is more likely to bounce off this level than break through we're gonna have a ton of these uh, sessions these are the first of many uh, we're gonna have professionals coming in teaching their um, their expertise their trading strategies how they've made millions of dollars and uh, how they're kind of leading their funds and things like that. So we have experts, crypto traders, uh, crypto coin CEOs, and a lot of ra a range of different uh, experts coming in. So we're going to be doing that every week with a market update and things like that. So um, it'll be really great for trading. So if we're looking at support and resistance, this naked chart right now may look boring to you, but we're going to draw on some lines, um, as in you can see right there. This is eight trades within the channel. So as you can see, you were using this as a support line. This is a line where buyers and sellers are respecting this. And you could have bought here eight times and six wins, two losses. You would have taken a loss here. You would have noticed this is a double bottom. This is another support. So 557%, two losses, 15%. Um, and you can just, uh, the winners outweigh the losses. Let's look at more. You have Binance coin right here. Um, we're going to skip these actually. We're going to skip those. Uh, we're going to go into cycles. So this is Warren Buffett's quote. We simply attempt to be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy only when others are fearful. How many times have you guys heard like Bitcoin's going to die? Uh, Bitcoin's gone for good. The price is, is at the bottom and then it blows up again and then it moves forward. I've seen, I've watched Bitcoin for years now. So I've seen so much negativity. The sentiment of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin switch from positive to negative. And, and, and it's crazy. So when, um, when we're at okay when we're at the bottom this is what i call uh, accumulation phase so this is a cycle right here i like to uh, notice cycles this is where i make some good money i'm going to show you guys some examples after this um so i like to determine which side of the market we're on there's two sides of the market and they're emotional sides positive and negative hope optimism belief thrill euphoria on the right side we have like complacency anxiety denial anger depression so once bitcoin just you know it started out there's disbelief the struggle will fail like others is this technology real is it a scam and then it starts to move up you get that hope there's is a recovery possible um 
Is it going to go up to, you know, $1,000? It starts to rally up. People get happy and belief starts to kick up. Time to get fully invested. You start to invest more. This is where the smart money comes in at the bottom here. And then people start to pour in. Thrill is like you're going to start selling whatever you can get. You're going to maybe take a loan. You're going to ask, you know, your family to invest, everybody to come in with you. And you afford is like when you're looking at your account and you, it's just like, I never thought I'd make all this money this quick. And the, you know, Bitcoin's at 20 grand. You think it's gonna go to a hundred thousand, a million dollars. And then it just crashes. And then the price cools off a little bit. You get complacent and then like you get this large sell down. And a lot of people can't, they cannot stomach a 90% loss. A lot of people can't hold this and even if you're holding this it's you're practicing patience on the wrong side of the market you don't want to be holding that so you go through anxiety denial panic depression my retirement money is lost so i'm going to show you guys how to um see this in in um markets and you can see this all around life it's not only in markets so as you can see here it looks super similar to the Wall Street cheat sheet, the market cycle drawn here. This is the trough, and this is where there's maximum, uh, point of maximum financial opportunity. That's the accumulation phase. That's where you will be buying, and that's where we try to buy. So Dogecoin, we actually just got into this coin, and it's kind of making its way up. Um, I think it's gonna go back to what it's been selling at the last five, six years, almost seven years now. So this is Dogecoin. Um, and I'd recommend doing your own research. Don't go just buying whatever I say is a good trade. Because what this really is, is trying to teach you from our failures so you guys can do this every day. So you guys can, you know, stop working that job or start making some extra money or start traveling and doing whatever you want to do or start trading full time. So you can see that these are all market cycles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Check all these out. And it just gets easier and easier to trade. Would you buy, which side would you buy on? Now knowing, let's try some support and resistance signs. When do you start buying when the price comes up here, when you know these are sell-offs, when you know that people are taking profit here, that these are prices where people are jumping out. But you have people coming every day buying without looking at the chart, without looking at uh, previous price or history, without even like doing any research. You have people that are just buying on a hunch, Facebook, friends, Twitter, you know, YouTube, whatever it is. So now the price, so this is funny because I'm going to show you guys where the price is right now. Um, it's actually in the support level and it looks like it's making, making its way back up. So this is a couple hundred percent trade. You don't need many of these trades, a couple hundred percent. And it's been happening for the last uh, six years, 2014. So um, I'll bet on it that it'll happen again. And buying in these levels of support is the best places to buy. And it's all about patience. Let's look at Steam as well. Look at this. This is a thousand percent move, a 10x. 600%, 400% and it's back on its support. So these are market cycles, Bitcoin as well. Some moves, not all cycles are gonna be the same. Some moves may play bigger than others. Um, and some are gonna be smaller than some. They're, they're not gonna all be the same. I, you, I, you shouldn't expect them all to be the same. That would just be foolish. Because you always have new market participants, new volume, maybe different news, some fundamentals. You never know what it is. Um, so you wouldn't want to expect it. Ripple as well is a super easy one, uh, super easy to catch when you start understanding where you should start buying, when you should not buy, because that's important as well. You're not going to go long on a market that's posting higher, high, uh, lower highs and lower lows. That's a, in a downtrend, uh, that's creating downtrend momentum and moving downward. Um, so you wouldn't do that. So learning these uh, simple skills will allow you when to time a market, when to get in and when to get out. So rules for trading market cycles. Be patient. Do not buy at previous resistance highs. Do not buy until price drops 70%. That's minimum. 70%. It can retrace all the way to 100%. Buy around previous support lows. Always follow your trading plan. Use a stop loss and be patient. I'm so sick actually, but 
crypto is life, so let's get it. So Masternodes. This is, I actually might have some Masternodes on my computer. Let me see if uh, I can pull some up right now. Got some smart cash. So Masternodes, they are, um, to me, it's, 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 I kind of look at it like, high interest uh, saving accounts or whatever the bank tries to offer you. So these are uh, useful because they incentivize investors to hold the coin. Passive income daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, protects the security of the network, enables extra features such as instant send, private tra uh, transactions. So Dash was the first cryptocurrency to come out with masternodes. You essentially need like X amount of coins, a VPS, an IP address, and a little bit of time to set it up. So Essentially, you have like 10,000 coins or 1,000 Dash, and that'll pay you 7% per annum to support their network, to enable uh, uh, private send, instant transaction, and not only will you earn from like 7% gains, you can earn from the appreciation of the coins. So I remember buying two Pimex master nodes, that was 20,000 Pimex. And then the price of the Pimex went up like 30% or 40%, and I'm like, sweet master node, I'm just going to take profits on this. So. Here is my smart cash. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm just running this in the background. I kind of forgot about this. Okay, hide. Where is my wallet? I haven't opened it in a while. So I'm just getting free smart cash, free cryptocurrency. And uh, I just don't even have to do anything. Literally, just cryptocurrency sitting in my wallet and it earns and I have multiple coins that do that so I just open one here I have a ton more so master node ROIs, ROIs return on investments are different for each master node Pivx is like I think 8% Dash is 7% some are 50% some are even 5% 500% but I wouldn't go for those don't go for master nodes just with high uh, return payments you know return on investments because most of the times it's a scam you want to research the team the technology make sure it's actually uh, real and it's you know has a potential you're not just in it for the ROI if you want to look into masternodes you can go to masternode.pro masternodes.online or bitcoin talk and here is smart cash actually as I was saying some people think it's so expensive to get into cryptocurrency but this masternode was a hundred dollars and it's definitely a lot cheaper now after the market's moved down and you can see that after 24 months it would give you 46%, so about 23% per annum. You don't see that in any traditional market, and if the coin went 5, 10, 15x, which it is, I don't wanna say it's expected to, but that's where it's, some of the resistance levels are, uh, that would be substantial profit. So it also gives you monthly smart awards, as I showed you, that's an extra 8.82% compounding. So that just, uh, it does your balance every month and you get that, and just that adds up. And you can see, as I was saying, market cycles, euphoria at the top. Um, so it's not actually interest. No, master nodes are not interest because you are actually performing, um, you're performing an action. You're either helping with the, you're helping with the network, you're minting new coins, so kind of like mining, uh, you're helping transactions, you're allowing private send, instant send, you're just allowing features on the network. On top of that, you're giving security to the network. You're like another node. Um, so you're just verifying transactions and blocks. It's not interest at all. Um, yeah, definitely not because you're, you're, uh, if you're gonna run a VPS, that's like five bucks a month. Yeah, so great question. Um, so back to this, as you can see, a market cycle may come, we may see some volume if some, some new participants do come in, we're gonna uh, potentially see this coin do well. So here's another cryptocurrency master node that I had, I sold it off. It actually died down. A lot of coins have died down. So uh, like I said, you wanna make sure you do the research and don't just go in for the gains. This one is like a couple hundred percent. As you can see, I was mining so many coins and I was just selling them all right away. Moving on coins, this is where I made my most uh, profit. I turned one Bitcoin into 40. That is almost, uh, at the time, it was like half a million dollar trade. Did I sell out at the top where it was like six, seven hundred thousand dollars? No, I wrote it down. 
because I wasn't that um, knowledgeable in trading, and that's something I've learned over the last few years. And I'm still grateful to take what I took from that trade. And um, yeah, so that was the best trade I've ever done in my life. I'm going to go over how we did that. Uh, so new coin market research. We were looking for new coins, and this is when the bull market was in. Market participation was high. Volume was high. There was a lot of coins and projects blowing up. So we're looking for coins that have the potential to 2 to 100x. And do I think this is dead? A lot of people ask at events, uh, masterminds, like, do you think we're going to see 2016, 17 again? And I, I potentially think we can. Not maybe as crazy, but... Um, I do think I, we can see projects doing 5, 20, 30, 40 X and 8. Why not a couple projects do a couple hundred X as well? I definitely think um, we see it in all niches and marketplaces. It, you know, I guess it didn't happen with the marijuana stocks and things like that, but um, blockchain cryptocurrency is a whole other game. And just in terms of our market cap, where it is and where the potential to reach is, like to gold's market cap was a 2.7 trip. Trillion, trillion or something like that. So we still have a ton of growth. Not a lot of people are using cryptocurrency and there's a lot of money that can get poured in, especially if like markets start crash, traditional markets start crashing. Uh, you're seeing all the, the, whatever the Fed's doing in the US right now, cutting interest rates. Um, they're just kind of prolonging this large crash. So gold and Bitcoin, if, if I would recommend the Bitcoin standard, uh, it's a great book. So Bitcoin forums and coin market cap are where we're gonna go to look for new coins. You're gonna look at coins that start from the cheap end. You're gonna stay away from bad coins such as like gay coin, invest into coins that have professional names and check the stats on coin market cap. You're gonna look for volume. Uh, BitcoinTalk.org, uh, Bitcoin you're going to look at proof of work, proof of stake, mineable, masternodes, airdrops, you want to stay away from ICO tokens, you're looking for new technologies, something that uh, can actually prove itself and uh, not just be like another Bitcoin because there's thousands of copies. Proof of work, what is that? That is what Bitcoin is. It runs on the SHA-256 algorithm and proof of work is where you actually need all this hardware. Um, and if you've seen these hardware made, like setups, it, it's super crazy. They take a lot of room. It costs uh, a ton of money to set this up. On top of that, um, it, it's so hot. Uh, my friend who does mining, he doesn't even have uh, heat especially during the winter in Canada. I Sorry, he just runs the mining stuff in the basement and heats the whole house. It's actually crazy and it's so loud. I don't know, I couldn't do it. Um, and nowadays you need a ton of mining equipment to be profitable. Proof of stake on the other hand is you just need the coin. All you need like master nodes, you need a set amount, like 10,000, 1,000, 5,000. Um, but proof of stake, you can have any amount of coins. So basically, it's the concept that states a person can mine or validate block transactions according to how many coins they have. So that's how they would randomize it. It's by the how many coins you have, and you need to run your wallet 24-7. ECA are examples, Smart Cash, Ethereum, Tron. Um, so you just need to load them up in your wallets. That's why when you let cryptocurrencies... Um, you allow them to store your cryptocurrency on exchanges, they're earning all these airdrops and they have the right to keep them for you guys. So a lot of people don't know that. They earn all the airdrops, all most of the splits uh, or forks and any beneficial things that come out from it. And on top of that, they have the private keys so you actually don't own the coins. They are in possession of it 100%. Um, uh, so... What we're gonna go, Zoom's telling me we have 40 minute time limit. I didn't, didn't know that, but they're giving us more time, cool. So start digging. We're gonna look at the website, do they have a roadmap? We're gonna look at the professional uh, profiles of the teams. Like are they, are they con artists? Are they scammers previously? Is there anything about them? You wanna make sure you do all your due diligence. Check coin supply and distribution. Are they on an exchange? Uh, how are the wallets? Does the technology look? How does the volume look? You're going to look at all that. And this is what creates concept in a cryptocurrency. Uh, the concept, the technology, demand, usage, active team, and community. So Electricoin passed all of them when we were doing it. This is our biggest trade. Um, as you can see, we bought it at two, actually 1.9 sats. And it, we took some sales uh, at, what was it here? 
70 Satoshis. So we took 3.5 Bitcoin at 3,500 percent. It hit 400 percent, uh, 4,000, 4,200 percent in total to be exact. Uh, so 42 Bitcoins. Uh, we took out. Uh, less than that because we didn't time the top properly and the exchange was going down. So definitely really paid out and it's allowed us to kind of uh, step back and master our technical skills and our trading skills so we can just profitably trade every day. Here are some other things uh, I wanted to share about Electra. The reason I went into it is because it's a proof of stake. I also mined about a million coins in eight days at that time when I had it sitting in my wallet. And I sold that, uh, a million coins for eighteen fifty eight dollars. So at that time, I was expecting uh, cryptocurrency to stay the same level. Uh, it's definitely dropped a ton from since, including Electra. So I'm all out of that. I've I've cashed out that position. I've closed out taking my profits. But at that rate, it was going to pay about um, what was it? Uh, extra ten thousand a year from staking, just from staking this coin. Uh, per annum. So crazy if you had some great coins from the bottom, staking them, have some master notes. Um, and that was recent transactions. When was that? On the 9th of 30. Um, not really staking Electra anymore. I've sold most of it. Here's another coin I was staking. And we're getting into social media. We're getting into the end of this. And then we're going to go into um, blockchain academics and what we're doing today to make money in cryptocurrency because you can see all of this and like there's so much information online and it's more information than ever and people are getting so confused so it's like okay you know the theory but we gotta apply the theory now so what are we gonna do to make money in cryptocurrency today with steam it uh, i love steam as well you can share your social content your videos your thoughts blog uh, pictures and you can get paid for it. So look at this guy, a step back or two. He wrote an article on it's wise to recognize when it's the right time to take a step back. He made a thousand dollars and he gets it in Steam too. Um, and as I showed you guys, Steam was at the bottom of its market cycle. So he gets a thousand dollars in Steam. He keeps uh, content, pr producing content. And maybe he accumulates 10,000, 15,000, or even a couple thousand. And then Steam takes off and goes 100%, 200%, 500%, 1,000% .000 to its other uh, all time higher. Maybe even gets past it. He's just uh, multiplied his earnings over and over again, um, just by earning it in cryptocurrency. So Steam is very powerful. D2 as well, same thing as YouTube, but it's decentralized. You can share anything you want and you can get paid for it. So you can see here how to maximize your rewards on Steemit $600. Introduction video, nowhere to go but up $379. And airdrops, these are a must. Like it's so easy to earn airdrops. It's just like, why wouldn't you do it? Now, crypto airdrop is when a blockchain project distributes free tokens or coins to the crypto community. Usually the only requirement is you have coins from that relevant blockchain stored in your wallet. And most of the time that's not even true anymore. You just need to um, maybe answer a few questions on Coinbase. You can go to coinbase.earn and they're giving $50 in multiple different coins. So that's a couple hundred dollars worth. You just have to sign up, verify your identity and start answering some, watching some videos, answering some simple questions, and they'll pay you for that in cryptocurrency. It's a great way to get started. The project behind the event will snapshot the blockchain, and anybody holding that or anybody who participates will get paid out. And um, you usually need to do something with social media um, or just sign up with Coinbase and start earning there. And why are airdrops popular? Because there's that endowment effect. When people think they own something, or they think it's more worth uh, the value is more worth, uh, it's uh, more valuable if they own it than not owning it. So a Harvard study or uh, one Ivy League school, I don't know if it says it here, maybe I'm missing it, but they did a study and their uh, students were giving, uh, given a coffee mug and everybody who valued it, the seller said it was approximately $7.12. That's an expensive mug if you ask me. And buyers who don't have a mug, they were offering $2.87 an average. When I was a realtor, um, I would go into a house and the guy to the left sold for like 300 on the right sold for like 300 maybe a forward sold for like 290 and then the guy's telling me he wants to sell for like 500 500,000 a couple hundred thousand more. And it's just because he's attaching his emotions to that. And, and he, you know, 
um, people who own it attribute more value to it. So it's a great way for cryptocurrency um, projects to kind of incentivize holding long term and, and, and giving cryptocurrency to new users. So here is my Tron wallet. As you can see on the left right here, all the free coins I've earned. There's some good cryptocurrency that have been dropped in airdrops like I think OMG, which hit 20 or $30. So imagine getting 100 or 1,000 free of those ones. So you never know which coin's gonna blow up. Um, here is EOS uh, as well. I got $1,000, look, I sold all of this. Um, I sent it to an exchange. I got this all for free just for holding EOS. And I sold it, and I think it was about 1,000 USD. But literally, that's just for free. I got it for only another coin. Um, and there's a lot of scams in, 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 with cryptocurrency, so you really need to watch out. With airdrops on Twitter, people offering giveaways, free airdrops, you never want to send money. You never want to give your private keys or any information. They're the ones giving you money, so don't get lured into that. This is very popular. Uh, I never miss an airdrop. Here is their airdrop alert. Um, airdropalert.com, uh, airdrop king, and airdrops.io. So this is wrapping up and we're gonna go into trading and what we're doing today. So first of all, we're releasing um, Blockchain Academics, the largest cryptocurrency education platform in the world. We're coming uh, with a weekly market update so we can keep you, um, we can, keep you in the loop with what the market's doing, where the price is going, where we think you should buy, sell, if you should stay out of the market and other um, opportunities. So we have intro to crypto, very beginner, getting started, buy and sell. Uh, we'll go to the bottom here, you can see buy and sell, uh, buying and storing coins, new coin offerings, trading psychology, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, uh, module one. Technical analysis is the, uh, it's the skill of reading a chart by using past history, price, volume, and taking an educated guess with that information on where the market's gonna go. So that's what we're doing right now, studying charts, chart patterns, and trying to uh, guess the market right, I guess, and it's very profitable. So we're adding to this, this is continuous education. Every student gets a hardware wallet. We're gonna be sending a hardware wallet so we potentially have um, uh, a partnership. I can't say right now, but we're looking forward to that. We have webinars like this one. We're gonna be bringing experts in. Uh, I just off the top of my head, we have a guy who did 50,000 to 10 million. He's gonna be sharing his strategy. We have a hedge fund owner coming to share his insights. We have an uh, ex-financial advisor cryptocurrency trading pro who is starting his hedge fund is going to go talk about uh, man, uh, a portfolio uh, management, uh, money management, asset management, uh, which blew my mind. Um, so we're going to be doing this every week. Some of it will be private. Uh, we're going to try and give out some free content, but some of the good stuff, getting these experts on, um, they, they've agreed, you know, they, just to share it with our members. So Let's get into some trading. I use BitMEX right now. We're going to go into TradingView. Um, so like I said, this is what we're doing. TradingView is what we use to analyze markets. Right now, uh, we were talking about Dogecoin. So as I showed you, Dogecoin is ready to do another cycle, in my opinion. And we're going to be um, taking an entry. I've actually already taken an entry. So... We're going to be taking a look at it. So this may look messy. I'm going to take all the indicators off, uh, remove all drawing tools, remove all indicators, and let's go to the day. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit sick. So I'm gonna give a quick introductory to candlesticks. So as you can see here, you may be wondering like what these are. Every one is called a, a candlestick. This is what we call a candlestick. Every single one of these. And it represents a day. So this is what the price did in the day. It started at 37 and it got to, uh, up to 50 and it posted green because it's positive. This one, for example, started, uh, not started, the price went up here in the day, but it started at 78 and it closed down at 70, 
three, so it's a red candle, and you see these large wicks, this is what it did within the day. So it started at 78, but it traded at 84 in your intraday, went down to 71 and closed to 73. So that's how to read candlesticks. If we're looking at market cycles, um, you're gonna see that what we, what we saw earlier is it keeps doing the same thing over and over again. And you can use indicators to help you. Um, you can use indicators to help you with your analysis and it'll kind of give you confirmation, more confluence on taking the trade. So let's look at this. This is a great strategy. We're gonna use moving averages and I'm gonna show you something cool. So moving averages, we're gonna use two of them. And we can use two moving averages to draw buy and sell signals. So let's go over an example right now, 50. We're gonna set this one to 50. And we're gonna make, um, sure you guys can see that. And then let's set this one to 200. So 50 is the faster moving average and 200 is the slower moving average. So as you can see, you know what, we're gonna do we're gonna do quicker ones actually. I'm gonna do 50 and 100. Okay, so once, so a buy signal would be when the blue or the orange, that's the slow one, when the orange crosses the blue and that's a golden cross. When the faster time frame is crossing over the slower time frame, the larger time frame, uh, that's a golden cross. So you would have bought right here when it crossed. So price would have been right here. And this is used as support and resistance as well. So you can see that it broke above these two. And once they start pointing up, like once this starts pointing up, you can know you know that this is uh, an uptrend. So this started pointing, it's going sideways from here, slanting up, and this one is pretty, um, you know, it's pretty uh, vertical if you ask me. So it comes up here, uses this as support, and this is where you would have bought. Beautiful entrance right here, and let's see where it went. It went about 193%. Let's assume you don't know how to read, um, a reversal and not realizing that this is almost a bearish engulfing candle and it broke down market structure here and you just wanted to sell here. Even that from here to this crossover is 60%, uh, 57%. And you don't see that in any traditional market. So obviously um, once you start putting money into it and start earning money, you'll wanna learn more and you'll be able to spot a good sell. Or once this happens the first time, and then the second time, you can have uh, kind of uh, an idea on where to sell. So up here, this would be some sell spots. <coughs> right here, right here, right here. And some, some crazy guy, or some crazy guy bought up right here. I don't know what this guy was doing. That's a bad loss, 189. So you know that these are selling areas. Even right here is a good one. Right here, because you can see a lot of uh, selling took place there. That's uh, appropriate right there. Okay, so as you can see, what's happening here? Let's, let's look. Moving average crossed here. Fast one, 50 moved over the 100, blew up. Literally this blew up. Okay, and you take profits at that, at that sell. You, you understand that this broke down here and most likely this will break down here. I would take the sell. This is my take profit zone, 100%. You can't get greedy, you don't see that anywhere else. It came back down. Look, I'm gonna show you guys. This is simple, like you don't need to go to school for this. This is a support line. Literally, support line. So support, support, broke down, resistance. So it tapped off this, came up here, used this as support here, almost like if I just put this up here, actually, you know, just slightly used this as support, 
came here, resistance, resistance came up here. Isn't this, if you can see closely, this use this as a support again. So it, this was the, the bottom, you can see. This is the maximum uh, amount of financial opportunity. This is the accumulation phase. And you can see here, this is where the, the spin happened. 50 over 100, 50 uh, moving average over 100 happened right here. And this tapped on the support. What, what other buy signal do you need? You know, we're not even looking at the volume. I bet you there's a ton of volume here too. So you just use a few indicators and we'll teach you which ones um, work the best with which assets. So here you buy in and we're not gonna be greedy. Look at this, this one, this one went up uh, a lot higher than the previous ones. So knowing that, <coughs> once you buy in here, you could have taken the 100, 160% and called it a day. You could have taken it and called it a day. Maybe you sold half of it because you saw that the last price was, was shot up a lot more than the last cycles. So you sold half here. Selling half at 162% is profitable, way super profitable. And then you took other profit at the next sell zone at 237%. So however you're doing, um, your... Um, Wherever you decide to take profits is up to you, whatever you're happy with, me 100% minimum. You know, and people think that's crazy because they're trading for a couple percent, but 100% is what I'm, I'm looking for, honestly. So let's draw this right here. You know, this is kind of similar. You know, this is, this is bottom, bottomed here in my opinion because in a downtrend, this is basic market structure. In a downtrend, we're, we're creating lower highs and lower lows. So as you can see, this is a downtrend now. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We'll count these as a lower low, lower high, lower low. This was impulsive. Uh, lower high, lower low, lower high. And this broke down. Now we're, pay, pay, we're posting uh, higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low. And this is also turning. This is turning right here, the 50 over the 100. Look, every time it's happened, I've profited off this coin multiple times. Where do you think I'm gonna take profit? Um, and this is tapping off the support as well. It looks like it can just keep going on from here. Like I said, this isn't financial advice. This is just what I've seen in the market for years. So I am looking for 184%. Um, I'll share my profits with you guys on this. Uh, I put in, 0.7, uh, 0.75 Bitcoin times 1.88 times uh, 94, 9200 is the price of Bitcoin minus 92. I think I screwed that up. No, I'd be making more than that. <coughs> I'm a good trader, but my math's off because you'd. Um, if you put one Bitcoin in here, you'd get 2.8 essentially. So you'd walk away with a Bitcoin and a half, which is very profitable. If you put a thousand dollars in there, you would have eighteen hundred dollars profit, um, which is which is pretty profitable. Those are profitable trades. You can see how a lot of people are making money. And this is just one coin. We're trading other coins, but we have different strategies for other coins. But as you can see here, this is pumping me up. This is this literally just turned the 50 over the 100. I've already bought into Dogecoin. We've bought in around here. So if it draws down, it's cool, you know what I mean? I already know where it's going. I, I, you know, I'm a patient trader and I'm gonna hold it for that 100%, 200% and then I'm out uh, and I'll take my profits and I'll, I'll wait for this to happen again or I'll even short this. So that's um, just an example of what we're doing. Uh, I'm gonna go over Bitcoin now. This is the last thing we do before I shut this down. We're going to go over Bitcoin uh, and what I think about the recent pump. So BTC um, and maybe Ethereum as well. We'll do Ethereum as well. So remove all drawing tools, remove all indicators. Um, right now, if you're looking on the monthly, and we just talked about basic market structure, we are still, uh, let's look it out on the weekly actually. We are still essentially, um, let me draw this on weekly. 
I think that we are still like downtrending. So if I just take these, um, we are putting in lower lows, lower high, lower low. Uh, this one broke out here. We had this very impulsive day. It was like four, a couple of days, two days, it was 40%. So if we look at the three days, you can see if I adjust this trend line. Um, and when you draw trend lines, people say you can't have them through bodies. You can't have them, you have to uh, align the wicks. I think that you need to realize that sometimes it'll wick up, so the price will shoot up. And I think you need to account for that in trading, you know? Um, because the stop hunting is real. Getting whips on is real. People know people are going to place their stop losses here. And that's like when the price moves up here, automatically take yourself out the trade. So people push the markets up there and, and trigger stop losses. So as you can see, we are creating um, a large descending uh, channel. <coughs> a descending wedge. So... As you can see here, we, we're creating higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And now we have reversed and we're creating lower highs. This could be just one large move if you're looking at Elliott Wave. So one large move, one large retracement. If we take the Fibonacci tool, Fibonacci retracement, take it from, I guess, where we started to up here. Looks like we have reversed to the 61.8. This is a PRZ zone, a strong PRZ zone. So if we can break above this, if we can break above this and post a candle here, I could probably, yeah, let's, let's see, let's see. Um, if we can break above here and post a candle and get up to 14,000 and start trading above, I'd be super bullish. Bitcoin's going to 50 grand. You know what I mean? And we're looking at a descending wedge. This is on the three days. So if we look at descending wedge, descending wedges are always uh, breaking out to the top. Um, you can see descending wedge. It, it doesn't really look as, uh, um, let me see, I'm just trying to show you guys. So some people may not think it's a descending wedge, but it looks pretty, yeah. Looks good to me, to be honest. So, um, if th this is this is my analysis, if we break above fourteen thousand, and you know what, I don't need to be the first person to like assume, because like if we break above here, uh, I don't care to miss this, to be honest. Because if we come back down, and we like test this as support and start going to profit levels, so from here to the first profit level, right here and then to the third, uh, second profit level. That's like, uh, I know we're guaranteed bull. I know we're moving forward and I know I'm gonna hit that. So from here to here, 27%, 58% and we keep moving to higher highs. So um, I would obviously, I'm, I'm watching this every day. So for me to miss this move, I probably won't to be honest. So I'm gonna let everybody know watching it. I think that I'm not sure if, China, if the China stuff was organic. I'm really not. Looking at the volume, it, it was super, um, you know, convincing. There was a lot of volume. This kind of looks like a bull flag too. Like this looks pretty bullish. Um, but as you can see here, we've been respecting this channel. We've been respecting this channel, and it looks like there's exhaustion here. We try to break through, we couldn't. We try to break through, we couldn't. We try to break through, we couldn't. There's a ton of exhaustion here. Um, so we can, I, like, I don't, like, I don't, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if we did fall back down. <coughs> if we fell back down to the 6,000s and maybe even tested here as support and then maybe even, like, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I'm 60% bullish um, just because of that large move. But as you can see, we've seen larger moves. These are in days. But this was in two days. We've seen as big of, uh, moves, but not as quick. So that's why a lot of people are bullish and they think, you know, China is actually moving forward with this. If we break down to the daily, um, you see, you know, this, these large red wicks pulling down, but it, that's typical. This is healthy for a large retracement. So um, if we take this out of here, we take the Fibonacci, put it down here to the top. 
I still don't. I still think we can come down to the eighty-five zone. Like, what are the chances? It has to be super bullish that we push off the thirty-eight uh, reversal zone. Uh, there needs to be a lot of momentum, and it looks like I don't know. We're just not seeing that right now. So I think okay. You know what? We're gonna add the moving averages. Uh, let's do it. We're gonna add the moving averages. So we're gonna do 50 and we're gonna do 200. So style, we're gonna do this thick. This one is 200. Uh, perfect. Okay, so on the day, on the simple moving averages, you have the 200. So as you can see here, this is a golden cross. The smaller time frame crossed over the uh, the 200, so the larger time frame. Smaller time frame, faster moving average, crosses over the larger, slower mover moving averages. So you can see here, this literally would have been an amazing buy, buying right on that confirmation. And you can see it works for a lot of coins. 162% crazy. You don't even need to guess the bottom. You can wait for this confirmation. And now we're actually seeing the opposite. This is a death cross where you have the 50 day moving over uh, the 200 days. So this is not pretty to be honest. Uh, that's why I think we can, we can still see uh, some, some drawdown. Like usually on a death cross, it would, yeah, it would be uh, indicating that the prices are going down. So when you have moving averages pointing down, that's an indication of like a downtrend. So, um, you know, unless we get a ton of fuel and this kind of is a fake out, like the ultimate bear trap, I don't know. Like, that's why I'm kind of watching. This is like a no trade zone for me, but I'm still trading it as crazy as that sounds because it's so volatile. Like it's just bouncing in hundred dollar ranges. I'm gonna move this to the exponential moving average because I'm curious. And this is just, it attributes more weight to it. So let's just, this is what a lot of people use. So if we go 200, let's, and 50. You see, um, this one was a 50. No, where is the 200? <laughs> oh, I put both of them 50. This is a 200. Okay, so on the exponential, you see that they're not crossing. So people, you know, prefer one over the other, uh, but I wouldn't disregard that, to be honest. Uh, it's still alarming. So I personally got some longs in around like, Eight, like around here, to be honest, 87, 86. Um, if we can bounce off these, like if it just wicks down, because I know BTC is so impulsive, if we can just wick down, get into a buy, and we can just break above, like I'll catch the move, you know? That's just like a dream, you know? So I don't think it'll play out like that, but I'm ready. Either side, I'm ready to play it. Um, so if we look at Ethereum, let's add Ethereum USD to this. Uh, BitMEX is cool. You can see that when Ethereum, oh, come on. You can see that uh, Ethereum <coughs> is going up when Bitcoin's going up. So you can see it's it's very similar. Ethereum's up here, Bitcoin crashed. Uh, Bitcoin consolidated, this was kind of moving slightly up. Bitcoin took a dump, this took a dump. I think Ethereum looks more impulsive. Um, it's, it's, it's like when Bitcoin moves up, Ethereum moves more impulsively up. When Bitcoin drops, Ethereum tanks. Look at this, this is a straight, that's a straight drop. Um, and it's moving, you know, I think maybe there's more, um, volatility on Ethereum. Then you can see this. 
So this kind of looks. <coughs> <coughs> We're just gonna go to Ethereum USD. Yeah, so exactly looks like Bitcoin, but just like a miniature version. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a look at this. Same thing, still downtrending. I wouldn't, ah, uh, uh, you know, like that's not too convincing. Cause you could just do like, you know, somebody could just do that. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, there's lower lows being placed. So lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Lower low. This is still a lower high. Look at this from here. This could have been one big move. So lower low, lower high. This is lower than that. Um, this <laughs> great fake out. <laughs> great fake out. Um, and then lower low, lower high. So until we like, you know, if we do this, until Bitcoin and uh, especially Ethereum here, like what if we did this? And then we started to take off. We started pasting low, uh, higher highs and higher lows. Then I would be convinced to buy it. But right now we're still like, everything's still kind of downwards, you know, like it's still trending down. There's still lower lows. It's still in a descending channel. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I, I, I would wait. I wouldn't jump on any of these actually, unless you don't own any. If you don't own any, then you would wanna buy some. So um, I'm gonna take some questions. This is the first uh, time we're doing this. I don't think we have much people on here. So I'll take any question. If not, we are gonna wrap this up. We're gonna do this every week. Um, sometimes with other professionals or it'll just be us so perfect see you guys uh, next week check out our YouTube check out uh, our content there <coughs> our discord um, our course when will the course be up the course will be up in about a week so the course will be up in about a week um, we're giving everybody who is in our Discord and our social media um, beforehand a 50% uh, 50 off. We're going to ship them hardware wallets, and we're going to make sure everybody's taken care of. I know we've, we've tried to set this up for the last two years, but we now have some partnerships. We have some exchanges of potential funds we're working with, um, and this is the largest like opportunity that's ever been presented to myself personally. So I want to put it in front of others. So, you know, we just want to, it's, it's a disservice if we don't share this because I've changed my life with this and I hope I can see others do it. It will be cool to see all of you guys in person. Um, especially when you guys start killing it. How do you not be impulsive? I always find myself in FOMO because of that. Sometimes I find myself buying high and selling low. Um, <coughs> that is with following your training plan. So we're going to go over, uh, we're going to have sessions just for the, specifically that. So following your training plan. And that's like not moving your buy orders. Um, don't ever chase a buy. You know what I mean? Like these are things you should uh, write down, have in front of you, like, these, this is your trading plan, you know, you need to have, uh, if you don't have a plan, fail the plan is the plan to fail. So if you don't know where you're taking your profit and where your stop loss is before you take your trade, you shouldn't be taking that trade. And if you're going to adjust your buy because the price is moving up, you've already missed that uh, move or essentially it's going to come back down. You remember the markets, um, they need some time to consolidate. Markets need some time to breathe. You know, it's not going to just go move to move um, unless it's very impulsive, but rarely it'll just go move to move. It needs to consolidate. That's why you don't just see these long vertical or uh, downward moves. <coughs> you have a lot of consolidation uh, phases in between. So you need to make sure that, uh, one, understanding, are you, are, you, like, are you trying to day trade? Or are you swing trading? Are you position trading? 
Are you trying to get into day trades? And you're going to need a great strategy and a great, um, um, you know, an entry setup. Or are you position trading? Because if you're position trading, you shouldn't be hurrying into an entry, especially if the price is moving up. Because I found myself doing the same thing. Price starts to move up quickly, I'll buy in. And then it starts to move against me, I'll sell it. And it's like, what the hell? It just took a loss in two minutes. And then it's back at the price that I could have bought in, and then it's in profit. So um, sometimes you just have to take some losses. But developing a trading strategy, a trading plan, will help and that's in our training course we're going to be uh uploading the resources you have a ton of questions asking yourself before entering a trade you're going to answer these questions so we have a ton of uh material and like you know these experts i'm talking about like they are super super knowledgeable you know and i'm gonna get them on here and they're 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 uh insights like their strategies these ex-financial advisors are, you know, uh, Tom Mays, he's, he's super great. He is a uh, uh, former chief of VP at, uh, what is it, uh, Chase or something, or Barron's, uh, I forget, large bank, whatever, you know. So it's like these guys have been doing it in traditional markets and they have all these strategies and they have all the insight and they have, you know, <coughs> amazing money management skills. So this will take some time. This is not a just get rich quick scheme. Um, it will take some time, but we have all the education for you guys here. We have everything, and the people who were with us from the start, uh, you know, the, everything's there for them. And the people who've been in the Discord, we're going to hook them up, and we just want to see everybody succeed. So uh, we're going to shut this down. Um, but we'll be doing this weekly, like I said. We're going to plan to have some masterminds. We're going to do this the right way, not like other people have, not like those. And, you know, you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, and some of the previous members will come up for free. We're just trying to give out as, how do you not be impulsive? I find myself, oh, okay, it's on the face. <laughs> no, but seriously, we're gonna grow this into the largest education platform and then we're gonna build a fund. We're gonna have a ton of mastermind trips. Uh, and this is the thing, I'm gonna teach you guys how to be profitable, how to implement these financial, um, these financial strategies. And you can learn from other people that come in and present as well because you want to set yourself up for life and then you'll have this other basket or this extra capital that you can go extremely aggressive with because what you've learned, you've now applied and you've set yourself up properly. So uh, like I said, it depends on um, how you want to set yourself up, uh, where you want to put your assets, what kind of assets you want. You guys can learn that and you guys will be learning all of that here. So. Um, we're going to do this the right way. Uh, it's not a get rich quick scheme. You'll learn this uh, um, asset, this skill, technical analysis to trade any market, to trade gold, oil. You can, this is not just cryptocurrency. You can go to the S&P. You know, I'm going to start uh, trading the S&P 500 as well. And when it crashes, I'll be the most equipped to, oh, I see I'm drawing on it already. S&P actually just broke all time high. So it's, you know, this is a great market to be in. And some of the experts are going to tell you that we are going to bring on to diversify, get into some uh, gold, get into some stocks, and they'll teach you how to manage it and flip it from side to side and rebalancing your portfolio when some markets are going down. Crypto markets going up, gold's going up, stocks going up. So it's like it's balanced. And, you'll, you know, it's, it's just amazing learning all this stuff. So anyways, we'll see you guys in the next training. If you guys have any other questions, uh, post it on the YouTube video. I'll see you guys um, next week or hit me up in the Discord. Uh, thank you guys for who attended. And I can promise there are going to be a hundred, a couple hundred, five hundred thousand people live with us um, shortly. So it's, uh, we're building this empire. <laughs>